He is a very accomplished actor. He's been in theater. He's been on screen married to a desperate housewife. He has played Selena's father, and he calls San Antonio home. And we are honored to be joined by Ricardo Chavila now, who joins us. And, and I want to mention, Ricardo, that last night, season two of the, of the Selena Netflix show dropped. I'm guessing, being from San Antonio, you had an idea of the icon that Selena is. We're, are you getting more of an idea playing Abraham Quintanilla and what fans are telling you? Yeah, you know, I, I, I knew, so she and I were born the same year, about four or five months apart. Uh, so the success that happened with Selena y Los Dinos and then what became Selena was very much a, a part of the backdrop that was my young adulthood. So, I mean, you know, I was going to Lee High School, I was going to Incarnate Word College here in town. Uh, and I remember picking up the paper or watching the newscast on the weekends and seeing her performing at Rosedale Park or the Pochit Strawberry Festival. Um, so, I, so I knew the I knew the um, the importance and significance of the family and and of the music as well. Uh, and I knew that there was a large fan base. I didn't realize how large that fan base had grown since uh, since her untimely death. You know, it's. It, it's kind of crazy when when season one dropped. I didn't I had no idea what the numbers would be. I, I mean, I, I would have I would imagine we would do good numbers specifically in our area. But I mean, you know, it was number one for quite some time in Mexico and most of Central Central America, Latin America and South America. And so I, I was kind of flabbergasted by that. And it's the cool thing about it is that the um, that her music still it, it has stood the test of time. And why do you think that is? Because, of course, it's been it's been decades since her passing. But this Netflix series is opening up a whole new audience to her backstory, her rise to stardom. It seems with age, she is still just as beloved as she was decades ago. Why do you think her legacy continues to live on? There's a universality to her music. Um, you know, it is it is it, Tejano music is very much the music of the of the working people. Uh, the cool thing about this series is that it's opening up the story, the music and and the. Um, and the legend that is Selena, not just to our Latin American communities and our South Texas community, but to all of the United States. You know, there are there are, you know, Anglo households in Wisconsin that have been watching Selena, so that have never heard this kind of music before, that knew nothing about it. So, so that's a really beautiful part of of, uh, of this series coming around in this time period. And uh, and the the most beautiful part of that is that what people can relate to, whether you are Spanish speaking or Mexican or Anglo or African American, is the universality of family and of that families want and dream and desire for the American dream, which is success for themselves. Yeah, it transcends culture and, you know, race and, and, so. and all of that. Uh, one last Selena question here for you. Talk about the sure. challenge of playing Selena's father. I mean, this is a guy who's was was very controlling of her career, you know, is a guy who's still alive. I mean, is 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 there a, a what is the challenge like playing Abraham Quintanilla? Well, you know, I first I didn't have any access to him, which is fine with me. Uh, and I'd never watched the the movie, the previous movie with uh, Jennifer Lopez or Edward James Olmos. But when I got cast in the role, I, I, may, I was like, I'm fine with that. I don't want to have those influences on my decisions uh, on how I'm going to approach this character. And I just studied a lot of his interviews. I did as much reading and as and talking to people that knew the family, that worked with the family back during those those years in the late 80s and early 90s. And then also just realizing that Abraham Quintanilla is a, is a Mexican-American man of a certain generation that is the same generation that is my father and many of my theos. So there was a lot of um, a lot of uh, patriarchal information that I was able to draw from my own family. You are a successful actor and you don't normally think of <laughs> successful actors, Hollywood actors in San Antonio. New York, L.A., perhaps. I follow you on Instagram. You're always posting Texas, South Texas sunsets. So why do you continue to call San Antonio home? Uh, well, first off, I think it's because I just absolutely love the uh, the KSAT uh, news uh, uh, station. <laughs> I, you guys, you guys are you guys are my celebrities. Number one. 
Um, I watch every every night as often as I can. But but uh, to be serious, um, San Antonio is home for me. It's uh, I have I have friends in New York. I have friends in Los Angeles. I have friends in London that I've worked with, but I've never felt um, at home or in my own skin the way I do in San Antonio. Uh, it's just uh, my you know we moved here when I was I think in second grade. Uh, so it's like you know I can say I went to Blessed Sacrament Catholic School. I went to Robert E Lee High School. I went to Incarnate Word College. You know this is this is a this is home for me. And you do more than live here. You also give back to the community. And I, I want to talk specifically about the Madonna Center and what's coming up. Let's talk about that a little bit. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's, you know, my dad's been sitting on the board of the Madonna Center for quite some time, and, and he always has a finds a way to wrangle me in to do to do something over there. And <laughs> uh, and I'm and I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. You know, it's it's a beautiful organization. You know, it's founded by the Sisters of Divine Providence. It's been there for God. Close to 100 years, I think. And servicing the West Side community, one of our our most underrepresented community, and you know specifically uh, addressing fragile issues like senior care and child care for this underrepresented community, uh, where they probably would have none would it not be for the Madonna Center. So they've got a limited gala. COVID is you know it's it's affected everybody, and I'm just trying to do my part to to help them out. Uh, I'm going to be hosting their their limited in person gala. It's also a virtual gala. It'll be on the, uh, May 22nd. You can check out their Facebook website, the Madonna Center. You can also check out my stuff on Instagram or my Twitter or my Facebook. I'll be posting as much information as I can about it leading up to the event. One of the best kept secrets on the West Side is the Madonna Center. So yes. I, I yes. appreciate that you're stepping up to help. Uh, uh, you have my dad to thank for that. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Mr. Thanks. Chavila, thank thanks you. Thanks for... to your dad <laughs> exactly. as well. And thanks so much for your time. We want to remind everybody that the second part of Selena, the series, it is out now on Netflix. Go check it out. Ricardo, it's great to have you with us here this evening. Myra, Steve, thank you so much. Appreciate it. All right. Take care, my friend. We'll be right back. Okay.